my name is Sarah and I'm a teacher in Bristol um, and I'm going to do a short presentation on using resonant boards with people with PMRD. Now resonant boards have been around for a really long time and have come from the work of Dr Lillian Nelson. They're a super simple but such an effective piece of equipment um, and for those of you who might not know what one is I'm going to share mine now. So here is our resonant board. Um, it's a thin sheet of plywood raised slightly from the ground by a thin strip of wood attached underneath. Now resonant boards can be a really expensive resource to buy, though the internet has got lots of instructions on how you can make your own. Um, we're currently making our own and we have found some really good instructions um, on the activelearningspace.org website and I will pop that link below. Now, resonant boards offer a unique and exciting experience for individuals. Um, an individual can either sit on the board or they can lie down on the board. You can have, depending on the size of the board, uh, just one person or you can have multiple people, so a person with their family or their friends. Now, as the board is not directly laid on the floor and there is a gap underneath, any sounds which are made on the board are amplified. And by amplifying the sound, it provides immediate auditory and physical feedback to the individual so they hear and they feel the sounds which are made. I have recently challenged myself um, as a teacher on how I can use this board in different ways in the classroom. Um, and I'm going to share some of these activities with you. And these are the activities that have been voted by Bumblebee class as their most favourite. Um, so the pupils that I currently teach in here are aged between three and seven years old. Um, they have a variety of learning needs, physical um, learning needs, visual um, impairments and hearing impairments. Um, and for many of them, this is their first educational setting. So using the resonant board is often a brand new piece of equipment for them. Um, it's really important that the resonant board is introduced really, really gradually. Um, to place an individual directly onto the board can be quite scary to have that auditory and physical feedback. Um, so it's introduced very gradually to the pupils. Um, so I may place it on a table and the pupils can choose to put their hands on the board um, and feel the vibrations as sounds are made. Um, we also place uh, pupils around the outside of the board and then they can choose whether or not they want to stretch their arms or feet to feel the vibrations on the board and then they can choose to come away from the board. Um, so the board is introduced really, really gradually. Though I am working with little people at the moment, I've also worked with big people on the board as well. So some of the activities I'll share with you can be used for little and big people as well. So here are the top four activities uh, that you can do on a resident board as voted by the children in Bumblebee class. Our first activity on the board is just placing an individual on the board and allowing them the time and the opportunity to explore by themselves. Um, as the individual moves around, they will inadvertently create their own sounds um, and vibrations. Um, even pupils that may have a reduced amount of movement can still create sounds on the board. Um, just the movement of a hand can create sounds and um, the stamping of a foot of a pupil who is lying down will create sounds and feedback on the board um, and it's been wonderful to see the progress of the pupils who have just had time on the board as they become more familiar with the board and they've developed their awareness of cause and effect so they have created those sounds and, and, and vibrations and that feedback from their own movement. I have observed pupils um, increase their movement and become a lot more confident in the types of movements which they create on the board. Um, an example is I had a pupil um, who would just tap her hands and over the course of a few weeks, that changed to scratching. Um, so the longer she spent on the board, the more adventurous she became in her movements. Um, so our, top, our first activity is just allowing the children time to be and explore on the board. Our second activity um, that the pupils communicate that they really enjoy is exploring objects on the board. And objects can be anything. They can be movement based objects like pullback cars, or they can be sound making um, objects like the wobble balls, um, or they can literally simply be teaspoons. These are some of the most favorite objects that the children enjoy exploring on the board and um, they make a lovely sound, quite a loud sound. 
Um, another favourite resource the children really enjoy exploring are Christmas beads. Um, these are a firm favourite. Um, we've got quite a lot of sets of beads now and the children love exploring these and they, these make a wonderful sound on the board. We also have plastic chains. Make a slightly different sound to the beads. Uh, we also have wind-up toys. They make a nice sound. Got one pupil that finds that incredibly funny. Um, we have even things like bangles. Um, there's a teaching assistant in here that has bangles. Um, and one of the pupils kept reaching out and she managed to pull one off and she had a whale of a time just banging the bangle. It's a really tingly sound. So obviously I've gone and bought some bangles for children to explore. Um, it can be absolutely anything um, and these are the firm favourite objects um, that the children in Bumblebee class currently enjoy. Our third favourite activity is singing and storytelling on the resonant board. So we place a pupil or pupils on the board and I have adults around the outside of the board and we gently tap different rhymes and rhythms and songs and stories. Um, so for example for our younger pupils we will tap out nursery rhymes on the board. Um, for older pupils, I've tapped out Bob Marley songs. Um, it's been wonderful to see the children respond to familiar songs and rhymes in a whole body experience. We also do lots of storytelling on the resonant board as well. So as a teacher, I have a different book every term for our reading sessions, and I write a resonant board version of that story as well, so the children can experience the story, the same story, our topic story, on the board. Now in the versions and the resonance board versions of the story, I incorporate different tempos in tapping, I do some loud tapping and also some quiet tapping as well. I also incorporate story props that the children can explore on the board as well. And below I'm going to include a link um, to a resonant board version of a story um, that you might like to try with the pupils or the individuals that you work with. The last activity that the pupils in Bumblebee class really enjoy using on the board is using the portable speaker and um, this is a boom box that I hook up to the laptop and I play a variety of different music for the children to experience. Um, we play classical music, um, hip hop, rock and pop and by placing the speaker on the board um, the children can feel the vibrations and obviously hear the amplified music via the board. So from engaging in these activities, what are the children learning? They are learning loads. Um, I am an early years teacher and I have very briefly broken down what the children are learning within each area of the early years curriculum. So the first one is physical development. Within fine motor development, children are learning to reach and grasp and to release subjects. They're learning to manip manipulate objects and also crossing over their midline as well. Within grace motor movement, um, pupils are exploring their whole body movements on the board, so purposely uh, moving or rolling or changing position on the board. Um, and pupils are also learning to develop their spatial awareness, so feeling where the edge of the board is. Within personal, social and emotional development, um, there's been beautiful, playful interactions with adults and interactions with their friends on the board. Um, for example, noticing that a peer is on the board, playing alongside a peer, and also some cooperative play for some pupils with their friends on the board. Within the area of communication, there's opportunities to request more or finish. Um, there's also the encouragement of vocalisations during pupils' explorations um, and also to encounter, listen and respond to a range of sounds. Within literacy, pupils are listening and responding to the stories which are tapped out with a particular reference to those repetitive parts of a song. Um, and also responding to songs and rhymes and rhythmic activities um, and listening to and responding to sounds within phase one phonics. Within maths, pupils are developing their awareness of one or lots of objects on the board. 
um, also exploring collection of objects, for example, those teaspoons or jar lids, anticipating and exploring props and number songs, um, and also exploring big and small objects on the resonant board. Within understanding of the world, which is science, um, pupils are developing their ability to repeat actions which have an effect. Um, so, for example, banging their foot or tapping their foot on the board and realising that that is creating an effect. Noticing visual and auditory changes in their environment. Um, communicating an awareness of a change in their immediate environment as well. Within expressive art and design, uh, pupils develop their awareness of rhyme songs and beats. Um, they purposely move their own bodies to create an effect, so tapping and stamping the feet on the resonant board. Imitates and improvises actions that they have observed during our resonant board story and rhyme sessions that we have. We've got lots of pupils that join in with the adults as they tap songs and rhymes and stories. Um, so an awful lot can be learnt on the resonant board and that is just such a small selection um, of learning intentions and learning objectives that my pupils work on across all areas of the curriculum. Right, so my pupils have shown engagement and enjoyment when using the resonant board. I've observed pupils show anticipation, playfulness, motivation, persistence, intentional communication and a development in their spatial awareness just to name a few just to name a few when more than one pupil is placed on the board i've seen pupils reach out to each other in excitement um, as they receive feedback from each other's movements for those pupils that are overstimulated um, i've observed them become much more relaxed on the board as a gentle rhythm is tapped out for those pupils who are understimulated, I've observed them become more engaged with objects on the board, increasing their explorations as they receive the auditory feedback um, and the vibrations from their play. For those pupils with hearing impairments, it has been wonderful to see them access sound in a whole body experience as well. Um, but most importantly, observing pupils lead and develop their own play has been fantastic. Um, I hope this really short presentation has been useful and there might be something that you can take away um, with the people that you work with. Um, and thank you so much for listening.